Hi there, it's Matt Heffernan. Welcome back to the Retro Desk. And as you can tell by the customary hand modeling that it is time for an unboxing. And this is a one we've been waiting for for quite a while. Not quite as long as the Commander X-16 itself, but an important thing that we haven't had for it yet, which is right here, a proper case. So the folks over here at uh, Laser 3D over in uh, England, they have made a custom case for the Commander X-16 that's going to fit the uh, ATX motherboard for this first generation model that I have right here. And I've uh, put it in this guy. You might have seen an earlier video where I took this old HP case and sort of uh, upcycled it, if you will, to get sort of an obsolete Windows computer uh, gutted out of it. Still have the hard drive in there though, and put in the Commander X-16. Uh, and I even upgraded the uh, power supply because the HP one didn't supply the uh, necessary negative 12 volts. Uh, so, so this one did, this is a, a retail one, but this still has a fan and everything and it's, uh, makes it makes it loud and draw more power than we need so instead i've switched now to this guy which is the uh, pico uh, atx power supply which gives me just enough power to supply this and uh, it works out much better uh, totally solid state so no fans and it, it runs off a uh, a 12 volt uh, wall wart type uh, adapter so uh, instead of having this crazy monstrosity, you're going to have something a lot sleeker and something that's going to look a lot nicer when I uh, take this puppy out on the road. So let's, let's get this box opened. But right now, let's hear a word from our sponsors at PCBWay. Now, we all know PCBWay offers some awesome quality PCBs like the motherboard and the Vero daughterboard of the Commander X-16. But what you might not also realize is that they provide all sorts of other services to be able to bring your dream to reality, including the assembly of the PCB and even assembling something like this case using CNC machining and 3D printing and even injection molding once you're getting to that late stage prototype, really just figuring out what your manufacturing is going to look like. So go check out PCBWay at PCBWay.com and make your dream a reality too. So yeah, first off, we see a very nice uh, sticker that they put on here. <laughs> Just kind of uh, put under the label there, but let you know what it is. So you can see it's it's definitely a little thinner <laughs> than you'd expect a ATX case to be, but I think that's because it's all going to be in these uh, individual panels. So we're going to have a fair amount of assembly to do here. All right. Okay. Right off the bat, a good sign. Some nice instructions. So, oh, nice, uh, nice printing here. Look at this. So yeah, everything's all in panels, and we're gonna have to get all this stuff done. And it'll be fun. Look at this. Even this nice, accurate. Uh, rendering of the X16 motherboard complete with the Vera and the Pico power supply and the expansion cord, uh, ports. It's, wow, that's pretty nice. And here's all the parts. <laughs> and, oh, some looks like a little special mounting for the uh, uh, cabling. Oh, look at all these parts. So, so yeah, we've got this nice uh, power cable, uh, the power uh, button and reset button with the cables that go right to the board. Looks like I have case number 11 to go with uh, the Commander X-16 number 5. Would have been real cool if they matched up, but uh, some folks beat me to this. Uh, unlike the uh, Commander X-16 itself, I was not one of the uh, uh, like early folks to get it, uh, uh, thanks to generosity, but I just went ahead and got in the line and bought this myself. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's what we ended up with. But still, I, I got in there good and quick. It looks like we got some feats to go on our case and uh, some uh, 
other little parts for pulling everything together. So it looks like some nice little uh, CNC'd uh, extra pieces that aren't going to be as pretty. And uh, here are the main pieces. <laughs> All right. All right, let's take a look at the actual parts that we got. Now, the nice thing about these laser 3D cases is you're, you're kind of getting two cases in one because it has, uh, well, first you, you select the color of the size of the case. I went with white because I think it looks really nice. Just like a totally white computer. But then it has the little little blue details in there. So yeah, Commander X16. There's where those buttons are gonna go. So this is this is that front piece. So you can see it's it's not gonna be a huge footprint on here. It's gonna be just big enough to hold that motherboard. There's that. So here is the main. Uh, top piece that I got, which is the clear one with this nice venting in the X16 butterfly logo. That's pretty cool. But I also, you get, uh, you get two tops. And so for my second top, I chose the solid white with a little notch here. So this is going to be the uh, cartridge slot. So it'll go uh, right over the uh, uh, far end uh, expansion port and so you can use that for cartridge. You can use any expansion port for putting the cartridge in so this one just puts it right there on the edge and since I have this uh, pre-release model of the X16 it it is going to be coming up through the top as opposed to out to the side which is what the uh, next production run is going to have so I'm I believe that Laser 3D is going to make a new version of that case that will Instead of having that cartridge slot on the side, on the top rather, it will have it on one of these uh, side pieces. You'll have a cutout over there. So this piece, I'm just going to kind of uh, put to the side. Uh, I don't plan on using this until some actual cartridges come along. So this is going to get probably put right back in that old box. And here, of course, is our bottom. It's got some nice little brass standoffs on it already. So that is very helpful. That's so one less tedious thing I have to do myself. So, all right, let's get to building. Consult the instruction manual. So we can see here these cut corners are on the front. And then this uh, skinny piece. Oh, okay, I see. So this is... Oh, okay, this is a monitor support brace, so we can see here in the instructions that it is optional. So if you plan on putting a monitor directly on top of it, then this will help give you a little more support. I don't plan on doing that. I want to have that uh, motherboard be visible all the time. And plus the primary monitor I'm using is uh, this Mamma Jamma over here. And that's definitely going to be too heavy for this, uh, this plastic CNC uh, <laughs> <laughs> case yeah, this this is expecting a real hardcore metal case to sit on top of so uh, that's not going to work I, I have lighter monitors that probably could sit on there but the the big thing is is that I want the case for showing off the beautiful through hole motherboard and, and that's that's just not going to work if there's a monitor sticking on top of it so we're going to have the clear top going right over it and then that'll look real nice so this piece, this will go back in the box too. All right, so it looks like the best place to start is uh, attaching all of these little pieces on there with a little, these uh, little blocks to the side panels and the feet <laughs> on the bottom and so forth. So let's get, let's get to that right now. Like these little steel blocks here go on the inside and then a screw goes in from the outside to hold these guys up so let's get those screwed in 
Now, one thing that is kind of unfortunate, you get this bag of screws and there's all these different sizes of screws and not a good illustration here in the instructions as to which screws are for what. So this is gonna be a bit of guesswork on my behalf. <laughs> It makes it a little a little more like a jigsaw puzzle than I was hoping for it to be. All right, so I'm going to assume it's these screws that are going to hold these in because they, they do fit the threads inside the little blocks. So hopefully I have uh, six of those. Okay, there's that. And it looks like here, according to instructions and the way that these are drilled, there's only one hole for these guys to go into. So I'm going to have to do a bit of self-leveling. We'll get a little, little peel action for you on one of these. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Look at that. So, yeah, we're going to have to peel these off right now so that I'm able to get these guys screwed in and I don't have a bunch of that film just hanging out there. So, all right. Now, we'll put that block on there. So there's our first one. <laughs> let's let's get the others in there. All right, so there's one side. It's gonna be the right side. That'll go here. Peel this guy off. So this guy, like, I don't have to peel <laughs> the back off on this, but I think I will just because I'm going to have the clear case and I don't want to be looking at that <laughs> all the time through there. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and peel this guy off too. There we go. All right, let's, uh, let's flip the bottom part over so we can get our shoes on. For the bottom of the case, I don't mind this plastic being on the bottom. But do I make it the only plastic that doesn't come off? Uh, you know what? Just for you, for the people, I will do the big, big peel. There we go. Oh, it's so big. So much peeling. So what do you think? Put in the comments if I should make my own ASMR channel. Probably what I spend most of my YouTube time watching anyway. <laughs> Love watching the retro stuff, but if I want to set something on just for an hour at the end of the day, <laughs> it's going to be some more of the ASMR type stuff. <laughs> All right. So here we can see we have the uh, embedded threads here already for where the shoes are going to go. There's one footsie wootsie, two footsie wootsies, three, and four. So 
So yeah, those look nice and even. There we go. Now I need the little little corner pieces that are going to attach right here. There's one of those. So this is so this is the first like real 3D printed piece. It's got the here. Do more of the ASMR for you. Yeah, it's got the texture of, uh, of something that's 3D printed and it has all the threads embedded into it. But you know, it's nice. They did a pretty good job sanding it there. It's kind of hard to <laughs> get a, a real nice buffed uh, texture on uh, on these kinds of parts. But this is definitely, uh, as far as 3D printed parts go, this is definitely some very uh, high density stuff. Yeah, so this is definitely for this end. So this end's gonna have uh, these threads that are going to attach to the side panels. So the same thing over here, right there. So it looks like the only thing holding this front piece on is gonna are gonna be these little bits that are screwed on on the corner, and that's gonna hold these little tabs are gonna hold it back. So I guess they epoxied this blue piece on to this white piece. So that's uh, that's all that's holding that on there. No, no screws on the front, which is going to be a, a very nice look. And hopefully that, that lasts long term. We'll see. sucked together. Attach these guys on the side here, starting with the front. in there still not thrilled about this joint let's see it doesn't really want to suck in any better I think it's time to get the motherboard in there so we got we got to take it out of the old case <laughs> so let's put this aside and pull out this poor old HP case one more time The screws I have on here are the old ones from the old HP, and they are flathead. Well, they're flathead mixed with some 
other weird uh, and a little divot in there. Anyway, <laughs> not a normal screw. Got all the screws out of there. I don't need all these extra squirrely cables anymore. Let's, yep, we'll pull the motherboard out. All right, let's take another opportunity to ogle the Commander X16 in all its glory. Now, what we didn't see in the last video are a few things. One, I've put the CR2032 battery in there for the real time clock. And I've got here the Pico PSU. Now, if you get one of these Picos, you can get the 20 pin one, and it just goes in here on this end. These four pins over here are, uh, my understanding is they're not even connected. So if you put a full 24 pin PSU in there, those pins aren't actually gonna be doing anything. But if you get the 21, you gotta make sure you have it shoved over to that side so that everything's lining up correctly. And of course here, I've uh, since I added a, a ZIF socket on top of the regular socket for the ROM chip so that I can experiment with uh, reflashing the ROM or having multiple ROM chips and be able to swap them easily. And then another thing that I didn't notice on my own because I was <laughs> too, too uh, excited to get it in, into the case was to look at the back of it and the underside and on adrian black's channel it actually has uh, a bunch of folks credited on there including uh, this guy right here <laughs> which is not something i was expecting to see on there it was nice enough to to get one of these boards but then to have my name on it i think that's that's really uh really uh special and i, I can't thank the the team enough for including me on the list of all these people that did uh, so much to make this make this platform a reality. So anyway, there we go. Things to even look at underneath it. But we're not going to see this again for a while because I'll probably be keeping it in the laser 3D case most of the time. So put this over here for now. And we're going to say goodbye to this case. If you have an idea of a project of something that I can do with this case other than the X16, drop that down in the comments because uh, I, I do have the old computer that went in there. Uh, it, it's not terribly useful or interesting computer, but maybe there's something a little more interesting to go in there. Maybe another ATX project out there. That would be a, a nice thing to put in here so that this, this doesn't just go to waste and collect dust. But for now, let's get it out. Uh oh, now, bring the case back and we should be able to lay this guy right in here. All right, we get it on the standoffs. Okay, yeah, everything is fitting nice and perfectly. All right, so there we go. That is a lot more like it. No slop around there. It's all just exactly what you need. So let's uh, let's get that screwed in to the bottom of the case. Now see if these uh, same screws that attached the feet are gonna work on these standoffs. Indeed they do. go motherboard is firmly in place so now let's 
get our cabling set up. So this guy, I've got just enough space. So this is going to be an issue at some point. I'm going to need to replace this power cable with something that doesn't cover all the uh, expansion slots. At least here, it won't it won't worry about uh, it won't interrupt the one here for the uh, cartridge. But also, definitely with this case, having full size uh, expansion boards is just not going to be an option. So. We may still just keep that that old case uh, in case we are doing uh, any of these uh, sort of special add-ons. So yeah, we'll see. But for now, I think for just showing off the machine, this is going to work out pretty nice. So this is going to have to get attached to the outside first. in there pretty good so now we got a nice little plug for that it's not as clean as I would like um, wish I had longer threads and another washer a flat washer on there but that'll have to do for now okay so now we've got our signaling cables. So there's a reset button and the power button. Do have these uh, three little plates here. So I, I guess I, I pick which color I want. Uh, I guess I would have just more of the blue. I like that blue. Ties it together there. But you could do, you could do gray. Or you could just do more white. I definitely don't like just the white. So I don't know. What do you think? Gray or blue? Give me a comment. What do you what do you think is nicer? Gray or blue? You know, after seeing them. I'm going with gray. I think the gray looks nicer. I think we got enough blue here, enough blue there, and that gives us a little Another little uh, dash of gray going on. Let's see. Looks like we still have film on both sides of this, so I'll take off film for the outside part. And you know, keep uh, keep the other side pretty. In case this gets scuffed up, I can just pop it out, flip it around, and pull off this other bit of film. So there we go. So I gotta take these uh, nuts off the cable <laughs> all the way off. And so now the question is, which, where do I put uh, power and reset? So I think uh, I think power should go uh, at the extreme end. That makes more sense. Reset should be in the middle. So let's do that. We got. Reset. Going through the middle. But the nice thing is, that's another option on here. If you'd rather have power on the left and reset on the right, you can do that. Nobody's going to come after you. All right, so those are in there. 
reset and hard drive light. So I guess the reset button is going to have a little ring there for the hard drive light. So for the power LED, it does have yellow as the negative and green as the positive. So I'm going to assume that that is the same way for the hard drive light. Okay. All right. Looks like we got all the switches installed correctly. That's okay. So they are very, very soft switches. So not a lot of action to them. No clicky, just a, just a little mushy spring, but you know, it's all right. Should be enough because we just want a little, little momentary switch. That's all we want. And that's better than these little guys in here. Although I do like nice, nice audible clicking. And if I ever did want to do an NMI, I'd have to open the case to do that anyway. So, <laughs> all right, let's get the top on. So the question is, which side's the top, which side's the bottom? I don't think it really matters. So let's get the all this film peeled off. We'll peel it off on both sides, and we'll we'll make a judgment call as to which side gets to be the top. Oh man, there's a lot of resistance on that. Okay, one side. Oh, now we see just how nice and clear this is. Nice brand new acrylic. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm trying not to get too many fingerprints on it. All right, so like that. I don't think there's any real difference here. Right. No. No difference. So pop that on there. So this will kind of be the last bit of a forcing function on this to hold it together so hopefully not not too much too much stress on there so it's interesting we do get a bit of overhang on the back end but I'll allow it Now we're gonna see where the rubber hits the road. We got we're pretty pretty far off on this corner. So it's gonna need a little squeezing to get that together. Alright. So hopefully that kind of squeezes things together here a bit more over time. be under too much stress. Okay, there's all our screws in. So now if we take a look at this, not a fan of the cable management here. Uh, at some point I think I may uh, try to find a way to uh, to tape these cables maybe to the front. And of course this guy, that's just awful. Uh, so I'm gonna need a longer cable and maybe address that around the back or something. Uh, it is 12 volts DC, so I, I don't want it to, to cause any signaling issues back here, but I also don't want it going <laughs> all the way across like that. So I don't know, we'll, we'll have to see. Let's see, but anyway, case is built. All that's left is to 
put our little sticker on there. And there they have another nice little indentations there. It's like this is where the decal goes. So it's a nice metallic decal, just like you would have had back in the day. Let's see. USA UK collab. Look at that. Hands across the water. And there we go. Let me get that out. Oh. Try to get that. Need like a little spudger or something, I think, to get those edges a little cleaner. But there we go. We got all of our ports are now nicely and easily accessible. And we should be ready to connect our things back up. So this will be interesting here. The mouse cable is a bit stiff. Will I be able to get that in there? Yeah, see, it still does a bit of rocking on the inside. So that's not something I'd want to do a whole lot. I had maybe a little some some sort of strapping right here to hold this piece uh, against the the rear of the case and that would make this I think a, a little less hair raising for uh, <laughs> pulling those in and out because yeah there's uh, uh, I, I could just feel those solder joints getting pulled on and I'm not a fan of that. So, all right, let's get our, our SNES dongle in there. All right. And our sound. And any other things we don't have hooked up. I've got my SD card hanging out elsewhere. It's okay. Got that. Oh, and then here is the power. And that's going to go right back there. And I'll turn my monitor on. And finally, we'll hit the power button. Look at that. LED came on. <laughs> no uh, no smoke. <laughs> so now we've got ourselves a nice uh, happy family here. And we are ready for some retro fun. <laughs> All right. So I think before we go, I, I want to show you one thing that I'm doing for the X16 that uh, is, I think, going to be pretty exciting. So let's... Uh, Let's take you now to the emulator. It'll be a little easier to show you over there. All right, so even though the X16 has shipped to actual paying customers now, those were still technically pre-release models, and there's still a, a bit of work being done, especially on the software environment that's running inside there. And specifically, there's going to be some new capabilities added to the ROM beyond the basic and the kernel and, and some of the other things that we've already seen on my channel, including some more development applications. And I am going to be developing one of those. In fact, I'm already a good ways into it. So I've been working with David Murray, the APIC guy, to uh, figure out how to get the best possible tile editor that can be run right off that ROM chip. So you boot up, you uh, build up a set of tiles or sprites and you're using the X16 to do it. So you're seeing how those sprites are going to look on the system and everything is custom made to work specifically with the X16 with all the different uh, color modes, the color depths, the tile heights and widths, the sprite sizes, all of that custom made and to fit, most importantly, on a single bank of the 16K ROM. 
So uh, it's definitely a very doable thing. Uh, you've seen me make some very small tight things here on this channel, and this is going to be uh, the next one. This is the my next uh, big project for the X16. It's not a game, but what it will do is, I think, make it much easier for people to make their own games, even with basics. So let's take a look right now at how it is in its current state. I'm about to do the first alpha release. It's almost ready for that. So it, it's not feature complete yet, but it does have some basic capability. And uh, once uh, this uh, extremely minimal set of capabilities are done, we're gonna have an alpha release and people within the X16 community are gonna be testing it out while I continue to develop the rest of the features for it. So right here we see a, a simple loader script because it's not actually burned into the ROM right now. It's not part of the ROM image. It's uh, gonna be run out of RAM. So I, I sort of have to fake that out with this loader. And I don't have uh, the loading and saving implemented yet. So I am uh, letting basic do the load for me. So it's gonna load a tile set, which will look very familiar to you in uh into uh, vram and then it's going to load the program this rom image into uh user ram for now just to run it and then just go ahead and run it so an extremely simple loader <laughs> this of course will not be necessary what there will be eventually is just a simple uh command like tile edit or whatever it's going to be and that will actually just instantly uh, go into this ROM and start up this application, and then you'll be able to open and modify all the, these tile sets <laughs> immediately. But here, let's let's run it, and here it is. This is the Commander X16 tile letter. So it is a mouse-based application. We're going to take a little look here at some of the the features that are in here. Uh, now, there's not a whole lot implemented at at this point, just some real basic capability. So I think the really a key thing to look at right now is down here. So we have the tiles set at the beginning of uh, VRAM. And of course, this could be relocatable. So what it really is is going to be an offset of this tile uh, from wherever your uh, tile set is going to be situated in VRAM. And right now we have uh, 16 by 16 tiles with a 16 uh, color depth, so four bits per pixel. And the tile set we have right now, <laughs> tile zero, which we can see right here, well, that's just plain black. As you've seen before, it's always good to have your tile zero just be all black. But what we can now do is like, oh, maybe we don't want it all black. Maybe we want a little something in there. So I can uh, check, uh, pick a color from the palette since it's 16 colors. Right now it's just going to be one of this uh, top row of the X16 palette. And I have a white selected now. That's color one. But let's say I want, oh, this hot pink. Be very trendy. Uh, this could go with a Barbie movie. So uh, now you can see here the uh, color index has changed to four. And I can make... Oh, as you can see, alpha release, some things are not quite, <laughs> not quite stable. So that we're going to fix this uh, border line here, but here's our, our B for Barbie. <laughs> That's all set. And now we see the, in uh big eight by eight, uh, pixel pixels <laughs> up here, and then an actual pixels down here for a preview. So that is our tile one. And we can just do a little, uh, maybe a couple little, uh, white dots here <laughs> to make it look like more like the Barbie logo. So there we go. Please, Mattel, don't sue me for this realistic depiction of your intellectual property. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, pretty much uh, what it is. And then if I click next, I can go through the rest of the tile set. And now you can see this is just the, uh, the Chase Vault <laughs> tile set. So everything looks good. The colors are off because it is using the standard palette. What you will be able to do uh, is uh, modify the palette within this application and save that off. And then you can make uh, your um, 
your tiles, whatever dimensions and color depth and everything you want. Uh, right now, it, the, it assumes 16 by 16 by 16, uh, and but it could be you know anything that the X16 supports. And if you load a tile set, if you don't have any sort of metadata, that's something I'm going to have to define also at some point is the ability to define metadata saying, all right, this tile set has these dimensions and this color depth. And uh, then the editor will automatically know how to do it because otherwise, if it wasn't that, it could assume, well, maybe this is eight by eight or 32 by 16. And you can see things are already getting off the rails here. So yeah, if it was eight by eight, no, nah, that ain't right. <laughs> but let's say if it was, oh, 16 by 32, Oh, that actually looks good because, of course, the, the way VRAM is structured, you're just going to see two of these 16 by 16 tiles on top of each other. So, and now tile zero is the Barbie B, and then the what's actually tile one once we get back down to 16 by 16. But let's say also the color depth isn't right. If uh, we said 256, oh, now things look really weird because it's uh, we're seeing those first two tiles sort of split up into 8-bit per pixel <laughs> bitmaps. So yeah, things are, are looking kind of weird. And if we went through there, we would see two, again, two tiles at a time, but all kind of messed up. So even if you don't have the metadata, it'd be pretty easy to say, oh wait, no, this is not right. Is it this? No, it's not that. It's not four colors. Now, obviously this is 16 colors. So now I'll be able to uh, uh, properly deal with this. And uh, same thing with uh, the, the colors. The, the palette would also be additional, uh, additional data to save off. So you'd be able to load and save the palettes along with the uh, tiles. And then from there, You'll have a, a loadable tile set. Uh, you could have the, the header so that you could just do it with a basic load command, or you could do it without the headers. If you wanted to save those two bytes for some reason, you could totally do that too. That'll, that'll be another option that's in here. And you can then, uh, exp you'll be able to explore what the different palette offsets are and be able to play around and say if you, uh, and right now I have the background color. This is one other feature that is implemented right now. My black background feature color is black. So I can do a right click and that will actually take out the, uh, <laughs> the colors. Uh, but I can hit the switch here just like you would in something like GIMP. And I'll say, well, white's the background or no, I'll go back to that hot pink as my foreground. So now I can go in there and add more white or add more pink without having to make new uh, palette selections. So, but there we go. That's, that's kind of where it sits right now. And as I develop this, I'm going to be uh, doing some more little uh, peeks at how it's developing. But basically what I want it to be is as modern an application as it can be while still being uh, fully 8-bit. This is running on the real hardware of the Commander X16, except not right now. This is on the, on the emulator to make it a little easier to capture. But it looks great. It actually feels even better doing it on, uh, on the real hardware when you're using the real uh, PS2 mouse. Uh, the, the actual mouse control is a lot smoother on the hardware than it is on the emulator. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. Uh, and yeah, so that that's what I'll be doing from time to time, uh, checking in with the development of this. And then eventually I'm going to do the big uh, launch video once it's all uh, feature complete and I uh, get into the actual beta version of it. And then eventually we'll have a real uh, release version. And then the folks that buy Commander X16 will get this uh, built into, uh, burnt into ROM. And uh, since it is an uh, EE prom, it is uh, still going to be upgradable down the road. If uh, new bug fixes and features come in, you'll be able to fix that along with the kernel and the basic interpreter and all these other things. So that, and that's, of course, a lot of the nice parts about the Commander X16 that we have the ability to do all this. So that's, that's it for now for this. Let's now uh, show an even more important program 
my uh, Patreon list. Uh, these folks right here really make it possible for me to do these projects, to have the uh, resources uh, that I need to create the best content, uh, not just uh, videos, but the software as well. So big thanks to these guys. And uh, they'll, of course, get to see this video ad-free. Uh, if uh, but if you don't mind seeing the ads, I think the ads are pretty nice, then you can always subscribe for free on YouTube, but make sure that you uh, click the bell to be notified so that when my next video comes out, you will get the little ding on your phone saying, hey, let's go check out what Matt's doing, all right? So that's it for today. I hope to see you again real soon. Bye-bye.